Okay, welcome to Scripting for Administration, Automation, and Security. Today we're going to be talking about um, SQL injections and doing a, an introduction on that concept. So what is this idea of an SQL injection? Well, basically it's the idea that you can insert or inject code, SQL code or commands, um, to manipulate an SQL database in a way that wasn't intended. Um, you could maybe extract information out of that database, add information to the database, or even delete information out of the database. So let's talk about some SQL basics first and foremost so we understand how we can then manipulate the SQL. So SQL select will get data from a database or table. So for example, you could say select everything from the customer's table. And then that output might have things like um, customer ID, name, address, city, state, zip, that sort of thing. So then you could use something like select name and state from customers. And that would output just the customer name and the customer state from that, from that database. So that's the, the very basic select. Where allows you to filter that select? So now let's say we want to select everything from customers where the zip code equals 49931. So what that'll do is that'll select everything from the customers or that'll select all the data returned where for every customer in the Houghton, Michigan area. The or is a logical operator that will allow you to um, find different conditions. So again, we're saying select everything from the customer's database where zip code is Houghton or the zip code is Hancock, Michigan. Uh, so that'll return all the customers, all the data for all the customers in those two zip codes. Uh, insert is just putting new information into a table. So we could say insert into customers uh, and those values. So you can see there's a customer ID, name, address, city, state, zip. SQL allows you to separate commands using a semicolon. So here we're just saying, again, select everything from customers, and then as a new SQL command, selecting just the ID from customers where zip equals that. So these are just two separate SQL commands on the same line. Comments in SQL are just using a double dash. So just like comments in a script, um, it's just descriptive text, or it's a way to block out code not to be executed or interpreted. So it's the exact same thing with SQL. So double dash, you can say, uh, select Houghton users as my descriptive comment. And we're saying select name from customers where zip equals. Uh, we could also, use it to comment out code so it's not interpreted. You can see on the second line, select everything from customers where zip equals 49931, and we commented out the second part. Um, so maybe we're using that for testing. Drop is just the SQL method of deleting information. So drop database customers would delete the, the customer's database. So let's think about an SQL injection example. Let's say you've got a script or a website that asks for your username or password, or even just something as simple as your zip code. Your script might look like this. In Python, we'd say zip code equals the raw input, and from standard in, it'll give you a nice little prompt, uh, enter your zip code. And then in our script, we'd say our SQL command then is select, we want to know the name from the customer's database where the zip code equals um, that variable. Easy enough. Well, the normal operation would be we, we have the command zip code equals raw input, enter your zip code. We'd enter 49931, for example, the SQL Command is the select name from customers where zip equals variable. So what that would be interpreted as is select 
name from customers where zip equals 49931. Here's how you can uh, exploit that syntax. If I were to say my enter my zip and I would enter it exactly as 49931 single quote capital or single quote 49930 you can see now where the script would interpret that variable and it would create a valid but unintended SQL command where it's now going to be selecting two zip codes so I don't think that was the intended operation, but you can see where you can start inserting extra information in the field to have it interpreted by SQL. Here's a little more extreme example. Uh, I'm on my script, I'm, I'm still asking for enter your zip code, but what if I were to enter my zip code as 49931, single quote, end of SQL statement, then I were to insert an entirely brand new SQL statement like drop database customers, which would delete the customer's database, end statement, and then begin a comment. The comment would then cancel out anything thereafter. So the SQL command would then be interpreted as um, select name from customers where zip equals 49931 and then drop the database customers which would delete the database uh, and then comment everything else thereafter. Um, what about uh, if a username field? I could enter something like uh, TORNE single quote and zip. Uh, again you can see how this would be interpreted by SQL. It's not the intended method, but a perfectly valid SQL command that would give you unintended results. Now, this is a very famous uh, XKCD comic. Uh, it's called Little Bobby Tables. I'll give you a minute to read the comic. Um, it's basically the mother's answering the phone from the school. Um, thought her son was in tr trouble. Her son's name is actually Robert, single quote, parentheses, semicolon, drop table students, semicolon, dash, dash. So, how, why is that a problem? If you were to enter that as a username, you can see now where possibly the SQL command would be something like um, select everything from students where user ID equals Robert, perfectly valid command, and then the next command would be drop table students, which would delete the entire student's database. And then because of the dash dash, comments out the rest of the SQL command, rendering it um, useless. So it, it, would, it would execute the command and then also delete the, the database. Um, so you can see why this, this is a, a, a real issue with SQL injection. Here are a lot of really good references for um, SQL injection. I, I highly recommend you take some time and go through and read some of these, um, especially the Python uh, documentation with SQL Lite 3. That's what we'll be creating our lab in.